Hey there, Darren here with another White Spark weekly video, bringing you the latest tips and topics in local search to help you increase your Google rankings and drive more customers from local search. In this series, I do a short video that focuses on one specific tip or strategy for local SEO. If you're new here, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and sign up for email updates in the blog post below. Today, I want to talk to you about the Google Q&A feature, I'll give you some advice on how you can manage it and how to turn it into a beneficial feature for your business rather than a feature that could potentially hurts your business. Uh, before I get too far into it, uh, I got to say, these are not my ideas. I don't have original ideas on this. Mike Blumenthal is the man when it comes to Google Q&A. He's been studying it, researching it for ages. He, he uh, has done a lot of amazing work in this in the space and has taught us pretty much everything there is to know about Google Q&A. So I'm mostly reiterating all the stuff that he's already teaching us. Uh, I highly encourage you to check out his blog posts. So he's got a few of them on the um, Get Five Stars blog. So there's a series of three posts. The first one is this, this uh, Q&A post. So uh, this is a just general introduction. Then he's done a post on the, the big guide to it. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, why does it matter? What exactly is it? How does it work? Blah, blah, blah. So he's got this awesome post on that. And then he's got another post, which is a five-step plan for success with Q&A. So I'm going to try and, and also iterate some of those steps, the advice that you, you, I would give you on how to manage Q&A. So uh, read those posts. Also check out their ebook. They have this awesome ebook you can download. It has, it's, it's full of advice. Uh, on on do, doing the best you can with Google Q and A. So uh, why is Q and A important? Um, well, it's really visible. It shows up all over the place. Uh, for example, this is uh, the White Spark listing. If you look over here on the right, in the Knowledge panel, you can see that uh, we have the um, Q and A showing up very prominently right in our knowledge panel. So that's an important reason why you want to make sure it's there. But it also shows up if people are researching businesses. So if they're searching uh, through the local finder, so for example, let's say they search for uh, Edmonton uh, restaurant. Let's check that out. Now, if I'm looking at these restaurants and I'm kind of browsing through them on Google, as I click them here you'll see the Q&A will show up right over here. So I can, uh, you know, if I'm researching the restaurant, like, oh, someone asked seven questions and I might open these. And so they actually have quite a bit of high visibility. People that are browsing around looking for businesses will see these questions and, and read them. So you want to make sure that uh, you are doing your best to, um, to make sure that you have good questions in there, that you're responding to them, that you're aware of them. Sometimes you have some pretty negative questions. Uh, let me give you some examples of those. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so this is a Walmart uh, in Portland. So th this one is basic, this person has left a complaint basically that her son has a learning disability. Uh, the manager called him a terrible name, uh, pushed carts at him. So like, this is terrible. This is the, like horrible for this business's reputation. Um, there's another Walmart uh, where someone uh, has, has said that they were racist and then a whole bunch of people responded saying, yeah, it's definitely a racist store. You don't want that about your business. Here's a plumber in Edmonton. Uh, someone was complaining that the, that the plumber lied about the job, lied about the pricing, lied about a whole bunch of things. You're being ripped off. So it's a massive reputation issue. Here's another one, very bad service. It's easy to find those. They're all over uh, Google Q&A. Um, another thing that you'll see in Q&A are just really uh, kind of dumb questions. So people asking things like, like, what is this? That's not even a question. Greatest showman. <laughs> Why did someone put that into Google Q&A? Uh, you know, wh what, sh what movies are playing right now at your theater? Like people just don't go to the website or whatever. They're asking silly questions. Are there movies with subtitles? Um, well, I guess that's a reasonable question. Uh, but you know some of the questions don't make a lot of sense. Uh, here's another great example. Do you know the way? So someone has asked this question. I decided to reply to it so I can get some of those sweet uh, local guide points. I said I do know the way to Imagine Plus Toys because the address is right here. But uh, you know there's a lot of stupid stuff in uh, Google Q&A Q &A as well. This guy's interesting. I think it actually might have been Connor McDavid that left that question. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, what should you do? All right, you, Q and A is happening. You, if you're not aware of it, you need to get aware of it. 
uh, you need to be dealing with it. Um, you certainly need to monitor. So go and check your business right now, Google it, see if you have any questions. Um, fortunately, Google has released monitoring. So uh, in our reputation builder software, uh, it, at the certain plans, you have the ability to monitor for Q&A and we'll alert you when you get new Q&A. Uh, Google has recently rolled out uh, in, in February the ability to get a notification once uh, a Q&A question comes in. So Mike Blumenthal wrote about that. He writes about everything. He writes about, certainly writes about everything about Q&A. So if, if you're getting questions, you can get alerted to them. Make sure you have that set up and you're watching for it. So you would definitely want to monitor and respond because part of the problem is if you're not responding to a question, you're as the business owner, someone else, like all these local guides, will respond for you. And sometimes they're giving the wrong answer. So definitely be on top of it and respond to questions. Um, sometimes questions can be reported. So if they're completely irrelevant, you can report them. Like this guy here, this question should not be there. So if I can go here, I can click report and I can report that um, a question as uh, I would say, what is that one? Off topic? I'm gonna go with off topic. So I'm gonna report it and uh, hopefully Google will take it down. Apparently in Mike Blumenthal, between one and three days, uh, they're, they're pretty responsive to this and that, that question should be taken down. It's just, it's, that question shouldn't be there. It's just uh, muddying up the business. Um, another thing you can do is if you've got these really negative ones, sometimes this is, it kind of goes back to how you would deal with negative reviews. Oftentimes, when you get a negative review, if you put in the effort and you show the customer that you care, you can get them to either edit or delete their negative review. And uh, let me just show you this. Um, so just to, to make sure that that was a true statement, I left a question for a donut party. Um, and I asked, you know, uh, if if these donuts would accept a marriage proposal. And so since I left it, I could either edit my question or I could delete it. And I just see that someone has a uh, responded there. I'll have to read that later, but you might want to pause the video so you can read that response. It looks like it could be fun times. Um, all right, so you can definitely try and work it out with the uh, customer, the customer that had the complaint and they might edit or delete their comment after you've resolved their issue. So that that's one way of dealing with uh, people that have these have left kind of a comment or a complaint rather than a question. Um, and I also want to talk to you about the potential for upvoting specific questions. So if I look at White Sparks listing, um, got it here. Here it is. I someone asked the question: Is manual citation building better than using Yext? Now, since we do manual citation building, that was a great question. I was very happy someone asked it. So the one thing to keep in mind is that the question that has the most Upvotes is the question that's going to show in your knowledge panel when it, they always show the most upvoted question in the knowledge panel. And you can see this one has five upvotes. I personally upvoted it. So uh, yes, and I can answer that question. I, I would love people to see that question and our answer. So uh, upvoting a question is another thing you should be doing with your Google Q&A. Take the one that you think uh, is the, the best question that you want to have the highest visibility and upvote it. Um, and then another thing that I really recommend all businesses should be doing is seed the Google Q&A with your own questions. So many businesses um, have this opportunity and I'll show you an example. Is this it? Yeah, this is it here. Painters Edmonton, they have done this. So uh, it's one of the few I've, I've been able to find where they've taken the, F, the initiative to actually seed all the questions. Um, now with the exact match business name, I don't know how uh, legit this business is. They might be. They, they totally could be, but they've taken the effort to ask, do you use experienced painters? And look, look who asked that question. Painters Edmonton asked the question, do you use experienced painters? And Painters Edmonton, the owner, answered the question. And they've done this with all of their most frequently asked questions, which I think is a great idea. Uh, how long does it take for a typical paint job? What is, how's your pricing compared to your competitors? Uh, do you offer consul color consultations? Whatever, all these great questions. And uh, you know, if I look at uh, a friend and client of mine, Eager Beaver Moving, 
Um, they've got this great section on their website with frequently asked questions and all of those can be excellent Google Q&A. They can see the Q&A with their own question, getting that information front and center to people that are searching about their business. So I really think that uh, people should seed with questions. Get Five Stars uh, and Mike Blumenthal, when he did this research, they, uh, they looked in the dental segment at what types of questions were being asked. So a lot of people were asking about like, do you accept my uh, particular type of insurance? Uh, they had irrelevant questions. Uh, can I book an appointment? Reputation, so that's when people are leaving reviews. Uh, basically it's about the business, like hours of operation and services. That's a big one. Um, so we see that too. It's like uh, another one that comes up a lot uh, that I found in my, re my really quick just checking around is cost. A lot of people are asking questions about pricing. You know, how much for a paint job or, you know, how much are cannolis? I, I guess the website doesn't necessarily have the price on the, their website. So people are asking that in Google Q&A. So it might be helpful to list prices. Now that Google has the new menu option and services option, that's a, certainly the best place for those kinds of questions. Um, and then also about specific services. So uh, this is the hairstylist. Do you guys do braiding? Um, uh, particular products offered. Does this place uh, serve only tea? Um, and then also a lot of questions about hours or opening dates. So those are questions you could see it as well to sort of preempt that uh, for people that are looking for that information. So are you open on specific uh, holidays? Uh, are you open on family day? Uh, are you open on January 1st? So a lot of that kind of stuff. And then parking seems to come up a lot. You know, is there street parking? Where is parking available? Um, those kinds of things. And if you're talking about seating questions, this one is a little bit, uh, a little bit walking a gray line, but you could seed questions with ones that are really good. I love this example. This is a donut party, which is a, an awesome donut shop in Edmonton. And their, their, own, their main Q&A question, which has the most upvotes and shows on the knowledge panel is, absolutely delicious donuts. Thinking about breaking your diet, this is the right place. And the answer to that question is, Yes. So that's wonderful. If we look at this, you can see uh, this This is the first question. It's got all the upvotes. What better uh, reputation um, feature would you, could you ask for? So this is great, uh, that kind of thing. And then of course, um, you know, seeding questions that are competitive comparisons. That's another type of question you could seed and that would be helpful as well. Who should seed the questions? I think if we're talking about something like this, then it probably shouldn't be the business owner, uh, but it might be the business owner's friends or family. Uh, yeah, that kind of thing. So I think that's mostly all that I have to say to you about um, Google Q&A. I hope that that gives you some direction. I hope it gets you uh, encouraged to actually deal with this because uh, most businesses that I'm looking at are not doing anything with Google Q&A. Uh, you should get your questions in there. You should definitely be monitoring and uh, responding and reporting anything that is uh, inappropriate on your Google Q&A. Getting on top of it, it's another thing uh, that businesses should be um, putting their best foot forward on. And I think it's a great opportunity. So hopefully that was helpful and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.